attended and, and had a very similar experience as a lot of acupuncturists, which was after I took the horrendous California <coughs> board exam and passed it, I don't think I ever, ever thought I would pass it, um, all of a sudden I was faced with the reality of what next? What do I do now that I've passed this test, now that I've gotten out of school, what's the next step for me? And the reality was is that there was really only one step that I could take and that was private practice. And the truth was I didn't know anything about private practice. I had taken one class in school. Most of the time I zoned out or, or studied other things because I just kind of felt like, okay, well this information isn't relevant to taking these big tests that I have to take. I'll figure this out later. Well, the later comes faster than you ever imagine it will. And when it does come, it's very sobering. All of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, I have to start a business. What do I know about business? And let me tell you, I personally didn't know anything about business. I knew that I was already in debt. Okay, I had a massive student loan that I took out throughout school. All of a sudden I was expected to pay it back. I knew that starting a business required capital investment. I didn't want to take out more debt. Okay, I also knew that starting a business required a lot of information and experience that I didn't have. And so that became more daunting and more terrifying as the reality of the fact that that was my only option became more and more apparent. I remember calling Marilyn Allen. Does everyone know Marilyn Allen? You should. In our field, you should know who Marilyn Allen is. I remember calling her, which so many people do, and saying, Marilyn, I passed the test. Do you know of any jobs for acupuncturists? And she said, she laughed, and she said, Stephanie, there are no jobs for acupuncture, acupuncturists. You are an entrepreneur. Go start a business. So there was that reality again that I just couldn't, I couldn't get over. And um, about four or five months after graduation, I just started looking on the internet, trying to find somebody that would hire me. I was willing to fly anywhere, as long as I could just do what I worked so hard to learn how to do. But no one would hire me. There were no jobs. Marilyn was right. My only option was to start this private practice. And I actually started looking into other careers. I started looking into a nursing program. I started looking into becoming a PA. Just anything where when I stepped out, I'd actually have a job because that became more and more important as the reality of the fact that I didn't have one uh, started to sink in. Fortunately, I came across an ad and what that ad was, it was Celebrity Cruise Lines and they were hiring, they were looking for acupuncturists to, to launch their acupuncture at sea program. Well, I saw two words. I saw acupuncture. I saw travel. That was all I needed to see. That was it for me. I sent in my resume. I didn't hear back. One morning at like 7 in the morning, I get a phone call from the person who is in charge of this little pilot program. She interviews me over the phone. They never met me. I just happened to, she, as she explained, she lost everyone's resumes except for mine. So I got lucky enough to just be one of the few that, that they actually had to call. And two weeks later, me and nine other acupuncturists um, were placed on this ship to launch the whole program. And we were placed on this ship called the Millennium. And for one cruise, we all kind of figured out what we were going to do. We had these seminars and we quickly learned them and we tried to figure out what we would do while we were on board. And then they divided us up into two acupuncturists per cruise ship. I was grouped with an acupuncturist named Dan Brown. He's now the director of this program. And we, after about a month of being on board, we looked at each other and we thought, okay, someone's cooking for us, someone's cleaning for us. We're in a new country every single day. Food is provided. All we have to do is do acupuncture. We don't want to go home. And so this trial for us became about just not wanting to go home. We were having a blast. We were having the time of our lives. We never really thought that it would amount to anything. Like many people, when we were hired to do this job, we never thought, oh, acupuncture will be a, a huge success on the cruise ship. We just thought, okay, someone's going to allow us to do acupuncture and we get to travel for free. That was it. But what we found is once we really started to put our effort into it, once we started to work um, some of our experience and once we started to learn more about business, about marketing, about promoting acupuncture, what we found is that cruise after cruise, our business got better. 
And it went from, you know, us being hidden in this corner of the ship and no one ever knowing that we were there. In a way, it was almost kind of a joke at first. We were just this pilot program to a really successful, exciting program. People were getting better. They were getting great results. They were talking about acupuncture. More and more people started coming to our seminars. And cruise after cruise, what we started showing is success. At the end of our contract, it was such consistent success that they invited Dan and I to, to, to be the managers of the program. And so for about two years, Dan and I worked with just that one cruise line, Celebrity Cruise Lines, and we hired acupuncturists. There was about 20 acupuncturists, and we all just took turns going out on ships. And it was a really small program, but again, it was a very successful program, so successful that Celebrity Cruise Line actually built million dollar clinics in the center of their cruise ships. Okay, if you go on some of those ships today, you're gonna find acupuncture clinics in the center of their ship. There's another cruise line that has that. And the only reason why that happened is because everyone was amazed by how successful this program became. Eventually, the spa company, their name is Steiner. Now, Steiner is the, cruise, is the company, is the spa company on literally every cruise ship in the world. So it doesn't matter what cruise ship you go on, whenever you go into a spa, it's operated by Steiner. Okay, Princess, Norwegian, Crystals, Carnival, they're all operated by Steiner. And they all of a sudden started looking at this program saying, wait a second, if it's successful, why am I not running it? And so they basically took us over. They, they took over the celebrity program. They took Dan and I into the office. They sat down with us and said, how soon can you roll out acupuncture on every ship in the world? And so from 2006 until now, that's all we've been doing. We've been putting acupuncture programs on cruise ships, one at a time. And today you'll find it on literally every single cruise ship in the world, every major one. And it has been a very successful program. One of the reasons why it's so successful is because people heal faster when they're on vacation. Okay, now, <laughs> think about this though, okay? I, I, when I was in LA and I was practicing in LA as an acupuncturist, I would have someone come into my clinic, right? They would come in for one hour. I would treat them, then they would leave the clinic, they would get into the car, they would hit traffic, they would get home, they would clean, they would cook, they would sleep on mattresses that were probably bad for the bath that I was treating. The next day they would wake up, go to the office in uncomfortable shoes, hunched over at a computer for seven or eight hours, drinking, eating fast food and drinking coffee all day. And then they would come back to me a week later for one hour. I mean, facing those odds, I'm amazed that we ever get results at all. When you're on a cruise ship, you don't have to worry about that, okay? We see our patients every single day, sometimes twice a day. They're relaxed, no, they're, not, they're not cooking, they're not cleaning. Every day they're looking at the ocean, okay? They're in a very good space, mentally, spiritually. They can exercise, they can sit in the jacuzzi if they need to, they can go in the sauna. Okay, so it's a really conducive atmosphere for healing and because of that, what you see are people getting better faster. Okay, so the results are one of the reasons why we have been so successful. Never once has there been a cruise line executive that sat in their corner office and thought, I know the, the next best thing for cruise ships, acupuncture. Okay, that's not why we're on cruise ships. We're on cruise ships because the program itself speaks for itself. It still surprises Steiner how successful it is. Even in the recession, when even massage declined, acupuncture was still successful. Okay, so the reason being, people are on vacation, they heal faster. Also, think about it. Okay, one of the main obstacles that we deal with on land as an acupuncturist is people don't have time to come and see us. Okay, a lot of times I don't even have time to come and find, to get acupuncture, and I'm an acupuncturist. Okay, so imagine most people, they get really busy by their lifestyles, okay, and it's really hard to find time to, to, to put an hour on their calendar at least once a week, and they really should be coming in more than that. On a cruise ship, you don't have to deal with that. Time is not an issue. Okay, so all of these things are reasons why acupuncture has been successful. Also, we have a captive audience. Another major reason why people don't get acupuncture, they don't know anything about it. 
Acupuncture continues to remain in this shroud of mystery. Okay, it's this mysterious medicine. They don't know how to use it. They don't know why they would use it. The, 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 the one, of, one of the great things of working on board a cruise ship is you get to get in front of people. You have a podium. You can stand on a stage and explain to them why they would use acupuncture, why they might need acupuncture, and you have a captive audience. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a little history about why acupuncture is even on the cruise ships. Okay, it's a really exciting program. I am always honored to have been a part of it. I, not only is it a wonderful program for acupuncturists to go and work on board, but it's an incredible program because it also helps to integrate this medicine into the mainstream. If you think about it right now, the way people use acupuncture is completely wrong, right? They try everything else in the world, and if that doesn't work, then maybe they have an aunt that knows an uncle that has a friend that tried acupuncture, right? And then, then we become their last hope. We're their last effort to fix this problem. How much more uh, effective would this medicine be if we were there first, right? Try acupuncture first, and then if it doesn't work, try surgery and drugs. Okay, so one of the wonderful things about this program is we get to educate the masses about how acupuncture works, why they would use it. Okay, it's a major PR campaign for the medicine. I have 102 acupuncturists right now, as we speak, doing seminars three to five a week sometimes. There's 2,000 people on board that will at least see the name acupuncture every week. Think about that exponentially. How many people are just becoming a little bit more familiar because it's there. And that's another reason why we're very excited about this program. So let me kind of get into the basics. At the end of this, if you have specific questions about this program, I'm, of course, that's why I'm here. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what got me into it. Now, coming into the program at this point in time, you have something that I didn't have. You would have choices. For me, we had really one, one cruise line to choose from, Celebrity, and those ships only went so many places. Was it the Caribbean, Mexico, or Hawaii? Europe was really exciting if we got to go to Europe. Now, because acupuncture is on so many cruise lines, okay, if you look at some of these, I'm sure you've, you've heard of some of these cruise lines, Princess Cruise Lines, Crystal, Royal Caribbean. We're on every major cruise line. What that gives you are options. So let's say you decide you want to do this, okay? Well, there's a lot of possibilities here, okay? We've got ships where there's different motivations for people to do this job. We have ships that have really exotic travel, okay? They tend to be smaller ships. They go all over the world. We even have world cruises, okay, where literally you're on the same ship for 180 days with the same passengers, and you go to every single continent, even Antarctica. Then we have some ships in the Caribbean. These tend to be ships where the acupuncturists make a lot more money. Okay, so there's a lot of reasons to do these, this job, and based upon those reasons, we do try to fit your preferences with what we have available. You do have options. We kind of try to give you the, the, the pluses and the negatives or the, the advantages or challenges of each position. There's always going to be both, and we do try to fit you with what you're looking for as best as we can. Okay, so the program overview. Right now we're on 101 ships, 12 different cruise lines, as I said. So it is, it's a massive program. This does provide you with options. We hope to continue to grow as well. Every new cruise ship that's being built, acupuncture is a part of it now. And that's pretty exciting. And the incredible thing about it is that acupuncture isn't just opening the door for Chinese medicine, it's also opened the door for wellness. Since acupuncture has come into the spa, all of a sudden Steiner's saying, okay, well acupuncture works really well, maybe we should open the door to other wellness ideas. Maybe cruising can be more about, can be about rejuvenation, not just entertainment. And so this expansion of the program has expanded the idea as well out there. Now, we do worldwide recruitment. The majority of our acupuncturists out there are coming from America, and in fact, a huge majority come from PECOM. Uh, we, for some reason, we get a lot of students from PECOM, which is great. They do really well out there. 
Um, I would say if you looked at my top 20 acupuncturists, you'd, you'd find a handful of PCOM graduates. That does says, it says something about your education. Um, also, just in terms of, we, we find that the program tends to be a really good fit for your alumni. We also hire from Japan, Australia, Europe, Canada, Brazil. Um, anywhere in the world where the equivalent, where their training is similar to the United States. So we need those 2,000 hours. We're actually now um, bringing over from China as well. Why should I work on a cruise ship? A lot of people think about this job, first and foremost, as an opportunity to travel. That is substantial when you think about it as an acupuncturist, okay? Here's the reality of being an acupuncturist if you like to travel. I love to travel, okay? Born year of the horse. The more I can travel, the happier I am, okay? That is something that I've always loved. When I became an acupuncturist and I graduated, I realized that once I set up a practice, I am not going to be able to travel very much anymore. Okay, that's just reality. If you leave your practice more than a couple weeks, guess what? Your patients are going to find somebody else. Then you come back and you have to rebuild almost 50% of your business. On top of that, you still have to pay your bills, right? You have to pay your office bill. I, I don't know what you do with your receptionist during that time. Um, you know, there's a lot of overhead that you have to cover even though you're away on a vacation. Very different than what you're doing now. If you go on a trip, all you have to worry about is the ticket price, right? How much is going to cost just the vacation? When you have a business, you now have to worry about your business. Well, when you work at sea, you don't have to worry about that, okay? You get to travel and you get to do what you love. There was a point in my life where, you know, as long as I got to travel, I would have done anything, wait tables, uh, anything, you know, possible that would allow me to travel, I was open for it. That's how much I love to travel. When I was able to actually do acupuncture, what I love most, and see the world, that was a really good combination. Okay, as I said, we have ships that go to every continent. So if there's a place in the world that you want to see, this is a way that you can do that. Okay, here's some, just some quick uh, scenery shots of Europe and Alaska. The Caribbean, Alaska, it's a glacier. Kind of oscillate between the Alaska and the, the beach here. Here's some shots of the cruise ship as, as so let me scroll back here. Here's some shots of the cruise ship itself. This is a Caribbean ship. Um, not all the ships are this new and this big. This is a Royal Caribbean ship. They do tend to have some of the more flashy ships. You can see here there's a basketball court and a rock climbing gym and an ice skating rink and a golf course. Obviously not all ships are going to look like that. This is a bigger ship. The reason why I'm showing you this picture is because, yes, you get to travel the world, but working on a cruise ship in and of itself is an experience, okay? Cruise ship has its own, it has its own culture, and the reality is, is whether you like that culture or not, is gonna, you're not going to know until you get out there. Some people get, and get out there on a cruise ship, and they love it. It's a perfect fit. They love working on board. They love the international environment of working on board. They love being in a new country every day. Some people don't. But the actual living and working on the cruise ship itself is, it's, it is an experience in and of itself. I, know, I remember when I was on my ship, it was 4th of July, and I went down to go celebrate the 4th of July party, and there were 10 Americans, that was it, on the whole ship. Everybody else was, but then when there was the soccer tournament, when there was the World Cup, I mean, there was, you know, people all over Europe, the whole bar was filled with people just celebrating the World Cup. Just to kind of give you an idea, this is truly an international environment. Right now, there's a lot of places in the world that I can go travel and stay because I have friends that live there, and I met them on the ship, South Africa, all over Europe, um, Philippines, uh, you know, Australia. There's a lot of friends that I made on the cruise ship itself that also exponentially allow you to continue to travel if that's something that you love to do. As I said, one of the, you know, some of the main reasons to do this is obviously to travel, but I think as an acupuncturist, you also have the opportunity to learn very valuable skills that are very difficult to learn anywhere else. Okay, we talked about how you get to learn 
how to take this medicine into the masses. Well, this is a very important skill. I don't, I'm not sure if you've come to this realization, but when you get out there and start your own practice, hanging up a sign is just not going to be enough. Okay, you do that and you're not going to make it. The only way to be successful in a private practice, whether it's at sea or on land, is to bring this medicine to the people. Don't think for a second that the people are going to come to you. They're not. Okay, so this is an important skill, and it is a skill that you can learn at sea. Not only do you learn it by trial and error, but we actually teach you the effective methods of bringing this medicine to the people. Okay, there is a skill to that, and it has to happen. What we found is that there's a high demand for acupuncture in Chinese medicine. Okay, we know that by how successful we are. But the problem is getting the information to the people. How do you do that effectively? Okay, getting up in front of a group, group of people isn't enough. If I have a group of people and I do a talk about Chinese medicine, that doesn't mean that at the end of my talk, they're going to want to come and see me as a practitioner. And that's what I mean by effectively. We teach you how to get up in front of people, and at the end of your seminar, you have a line of people that want to see you as a practitioner. Okay, that's bringing the medicine to the people and then motivating them to do something about it, to make a difference with their health. Okay, so the experience that you gain bringing this medicine to the masses is invaluable. Okay, not only do you get to learn it at sea, but when you do decide to start up your own private practice, you make those kinds of experiences, whether you're speaking to a group of people or whether you're just talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, you learn how to do that effectively. And you're not going to learn that in school. The reason why you can't learn this in school is because you need a context. I could sit and talk to you about how to turn a conversation into a, pay, into a treatment all day long, but until you take that dialogue and practice it on people, you're not going to know whether or not it's working for you. Okay, and the, the, when you work on a cruise ship, you have the opportunity of taking the information that we've learned over six years of doing this and then practicing it on someone else's dime, right? You don't have to make the investment. We've already done it for you. All you're doing is honing this very valuable skill. Now here's some shots. As I said, education is a really important part of our program. And a lot of what the acupuncturists do in, in terms of getting patients is to go out in front of people, in front of the passengers, and do seminars that we've created that motivate people to get acupuncture. So here are some examples of that. Now I mentioned the nice thing about this program is that you can learn these skills on someone else's dime. What do I mean by that? There is no, there's, there's very little living expenses when you work at sea, okay? You have someone paying for your food, your room and board, your office, your liability insurance, okay? Your supplies. You don't have overhead. That is very substantial. It doesn't matter how much, how much you make per month, how much at the end of all your bills are you profiting, or are you just barely making ends meet every single month? Do you save anything? It's very difficult to save money in this day and age, especially if you have, an, have, have your own business. By the time you pay your own overhead and your business overhead, you don't have very much in terms of saving. Well, on a cruise ship, this is one of the main reasons people like to work in this environment. Okay, you don't have overhead. Again, someone's paying for your food, your room and board, your liability, your supplies. That's a really wonderful thing when you come out of acupuncture school and you don't have a lot of experience, you don't have a lot of financial uh, you know, income so that you can invest in your own private practice. So you have this opportunity to gain a lot of experience while saving money. And saving money is really the key here. Okay? If you have a lot of overhead, you're not going to save the money. Now a lot of people ask me, what is their rooms going to look like? I'll be straight with you, your room is going to be small. Look at it. It's pretty small. There's your bathroom. I mean, you could sit on your toilet, wash your hands, and look at the shower at the same time. 
okay? But I have to mention, you do have your own room. And less than 6% of the people on board have their own room. Most people share this small, tiny little box with three, sometimes even four people, okay? So the fact that you have your own room, it is an advantage, but I'm not gonna tell you that it's gonna be a huge suite. It's not, it's a tiny bed, it's a desk, it's a bathroom, it's a closet, it's a little bit of floor space. Enough to do a meditation, certainly not enough to do a Tai Chi, okay? So it is gonna be your own space, it will be a box, but it will be your box. Um, you don't spend a lot of time in your room. This is a very different lifestyle than what you're probably currently living. You know, right now, we go home, we recharge, we, we clean our room, we clean the kitchen, we listen to music. Home is this place that we spend a lot of time at. On cruise ships, it really is just a place where we sleep. Okay, we sleep, we get ready, and then we're out. We either are working and doing acupuncture or we're out in port seeing beautiful things. Okay, never, never, never on your day off do you want to be in your room. You know, the, you never know how long you're going to be doing this for and every day you're going to be in a really amazing country. I remember there was one day where we were in Florence, Florence, Italy, and that was the day I'd always do my laundry because it was a whole train ride to get to Florence and I thought, I can be bothered with the train ride to get to Florence, so I'll just do my laundry and kind of hang back. Boy, do I regret that, okay? I never even saw Florence. And now I really miss that, you know, I don't have that opportunity to hop on a train and see Florence, Italy. And so I tell you this story because you really don't want to spend a lot of time in your room. It's really just a place you sleep. Okay, how much do you want to earn? Now the commission structures are um, going to be based upon what you're bringing in. This is not a salaried position. Okay, this is going to be based upon you're going to make as much as you work, okay, in terms of how many patients do you see. It's very much like your own private practice, right? If you don't see any patients, you're not going to make any money. Well, the same is true on, on ships. You're going to get a percentage of what you bring in. Um, the treatments, just to give you an idea, range between $100 to 150 What you're taking from that is 16.6% .6 plus tips. Tips can really range depending on you, depending on the cruise line. On average, it's another $10, sometimes more than that. You also get a percentage of the retail. So whatever you sell, we have Chinese herbs, we have facial products, you get 7.25% of that. I can't give you a guarantee, you're never gonna hear me say that, because it's a commission-based position. I can give you an average, okay? I have 101 acupuncturists at sea. If I take the average of what they're earning right now, it's about $800 a week, okay? So it's about two, three, sometimes $4,000 a month. I have people on the high end, okay? My top five, six acupuncturists are probably making anywhere between 10, a couple of them are even making 11 or $12,000 a month, okay? That's a lot of money if you think about the fact that they have no overhead. I, have, I had an acupuncturist recently come to my class and tell my class, I make more than the captain does. She's obviously one of our top acupuncturists, exception, not the rule. Um, but you can make a lot of income if you're somebody who's motivated to do so. Okay, I also have someone who's not, you know, I have people who don't make a lot of money. You know, maybe they're making $1,000 a month. Okay, that's not a lot of money. But, you know, obviously you're going to have, when you have a commission-based position, you're going to have people on both ends. And I kind of gave you an idea of what's in the middle. Do you have a question? Uh, I have many, but quick question on the subject. Yeah. Uh, do, what do they charge for herbs, roughly? $95 if for 270 caps. So we don't usually give people a week's worth. We give people about a month's worth of herbs. And we can talk more about that because I know that's different than how you're trained. Any other questions? Who sets the price list for different procedures? Um, we do. The, uh, you, do have, you do have some ability to discount, okay? So we have package pricing, for example. You can never bring the price of acupuncture below $100. So if you do that, then everyone's losing money. Um, but you can bring it all the way down to $100. The full price, one treatment, this is a full price acupuncture. One treatment, $150, follow up, $125. And then we have package prices where they're incentivized to book, you know, multiple at a time. Packages of three, five, seven, and ten. Most people do book 
people on pack or treatment plans. Mm -hmm. How successful or needed is facial rejuvenation of acupuncture? It depends on the acupuncturist. I mean, the acupuncturist really sets the tone. We don't really get involved with how you practice acupuncture or what you're really pushing. We have our seminars, we teach you our business model, which is really successful and effective. But ultimately, if you're someone who does a lot of facial rejuvenation, you're gonna push it in your seminars, you're gonna talk about it, and then you're gonna motivate people to get it. So I mean, if you think about it, this is an incredible opportunity for whatever you wanna promote. You are, Basically, it's like moving to a village of 2,000 people and you're the only acupuncturist, okay? There is no competition. Go to San Diego, throw a rock, okay? It's just like LA, you'll hit an acupuncturist. There's acupuncturists on every corner in these beautiful places. But on the ship, that's it, you're it. There's no competition. And so if you wanna promote facial rejuvenation, there's business there for that. That means there's just one acupuncturist per ship? Yeah, the only exception is we have a few ships where there's couples. Um, the, the husband and wife are both acupuncturists. And if they're good, we put them on a ship where they have a clinic. So we have seven ships that have acupuncture clinics. They're the celebrity clinics. And they're four rooms. And so it can accommodate the couples. It also accommodates our top you know, acupuncturists. You ask, if you ask me who's making you know, the, that top end of the $10,000 a month, you know, it's the people who are running three and four rooms an hour. To get to that number, you really do have to be a whirlwind. And that's not for everybody. Yeah. So it's not community style then, technically? It's one hour per patient? It is, but most ships you can run at least two rooms. OK, so it would be, generally speaking, one acupuncturist, two rooms, and however well we promote ourselves. Okay. Yeah, I mean, every, every cruise ship will have your own treatment room on port days, which is usually the majority. You'll have, you, you can swing two or three rooms because people will have their day off. If the acupuncturist before you was really busy, then the spa manager, a lot of times, if there's an extra room, will give two full rooms for the acupuncturist. Okay, so it will depend on your experience level. Um, who you came, who, who was there before you. Obviously, if we put an acupuncturist on a cruise ship and they're not filling those two rooms on a regular basis, they put a massage therapist in the room and now you have one full time and then another one on a swing, on a, on a port day. So the treatment rooms will vary. We do have some ships that have fixed three and four rooms. Those are celebrity ships. Those will be for people that we know can run three and four rooms. And coming out of school, you wouldn't even want to try running three and four rooms. That's something you would want to work into. I'm not sure about the herbs. Um, are they packaged formulas already? Like granule formula bottles? Yeah, they're proprietary blends. They're actually certified organic, which you're never going to find anywhere else. Um, and they're proprietary blends. They come from China. They work really well. They were designed by a group of Chinese doctors um, for specifically for the cruise ship. So, they work well, they're very safe, they are better quality than anything you're gonna find here. So they're really, you know, they're excellent formulas. The only, the downside to the Chinese herbal formulas is, you know, we only have about 10 of them. Oh. So you have to mix and match them. Oh, we can't do that? Yeah, you can. So let's say someone has like spleen chi deficiency and yin deficiency. You would just combine the two formulas and adjust the dosage. So, and we go over that during overtraining. You know, this isn't, these aren't things we expect you to know. We expect you to know basics about Chinese herbs, but we do go over kind of the fine, the little bit more of the, the details, obviously, when you come through training. Yeah, how many days are roughly port days? Because isn't that when everybody floods off the ship and you have no patients? Well, that's a good question, and it really depends. I mean, a great itinerary for acupuncture or any business, the more sea days, and that's the ship, that's the day when the ship is at sea. The more sea days, the busier you're gonna be, okay? Um, the port days are gonna be days where people get off, but rem the thing about it is that port days are not necessarily all day. Sometimes the ship doesn't get into port until noon, and so because as acupuncturists, we can run you know, several rooms at a time, so maybe you're practicing from eight until one, Okay, and you're seeing two people an hour, so that's substantial. You get a lot of people. You might have a couple hours off in the day, they get off, and then they come back on and maybe you have a couple hours before they go to dinner. There's going to be times when you have the full day off just like they do in port. You know? So your schedule will be based upon you know, the ship, where it's located, and, and the volume, trying to get as many people as possible while they're there.
Yeah. Does that book our own schedule? When you first start, no, you're, you're going to go on board and the spa manager will create your schedule. You, you don't know enough yet to book your own schedule. Eventually, the longer you do this, you know, you go on board, you know what you're doing, especially if you're successful, the spa manager gives you pretty much space to run your own business. But it's not something that you're going to get from the get-go. And the manager technically is your supervisor, so if she decides you're not running your schedule right, she'll step in. Um, most of the time, if the, success, if the acupuncturist is really successful, because the spa manager doesn't get paid on salary either, she gets paid or he gets paid on a commission of the whole spa. So the better you do, the more freedom you're going to have in terms of scheduling. You do work a 52-hour work week, okay? So I just want to make that clear. That's about 12 hours more than probably what you're used to. I don't know that you're students, so I'm not really sure what kind of schedule you're running right now. Um, keep in mind, a lot of times, you know, that might sound like a big number, and it is. You're going to be working probably a lot more than maybe you would on land, but you're not driving, you're not cooking, you're not cleaning. You're not doing a lot of the mundane things that take up at least 12 hours during your week. Okay, so what it kind of boils down to is you have this period of time where you're really focusing on acupuncture. Yeah, let me know if you have other questions. Uh, yeah. Paperwork? Uh, in terms of, I'm assuming we have to do our own soap notes, or do we not keep those because it's international? No, 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 no. We expect you to definitely keep uh, notes. You have an intake form. It's going to be a lot more brief, just like the liability form will be a lot more abbreviated than what you would have on land, but it's very important for you to keep good records. So, you know, yes, you will have an intake form. Yes, they have to sign their liability release. Yes, you have to put your points. We really put a lot of emphasis. I, hopefully, you guys are learning how to do this in school. We have found that this is really important on, on ships to do needle counts. That's another thing that's really important on our, on our intake farms. Yeah. Uh, what about for the folks of us that are married? <sighs> yeah, that's tough. Um, unfortunately, unless your wife is an acupuncturist, we, we, you can't really bring her on board. So you would either have to, um, right now we have it so that you could do short contracts, and that's what a lot of married people do. But after August... Yeah, together in a single room, right? No, because we have to pay vitrilling. So everybody who goes on board, we pay for. It's not just that... You know, we, we pay the cruise line, room and board, food, and things like that. And so we can't let spouses, unfortunately, come. Um, so you'd have to basically be away for seven months. Unless you pay for it. Uh, Unless she wanted, I mean, a lot of times, and I do have people who are married out there. It's just, you know, they'll, they'll pay for their wife to cruise. The nice thing is a lot of the cruise lines, and you'd have to really kind of figure out how to do this once you get out there. If you stay with a cruise line, let's say you do maybe multiple contracts with one cruise line, by your second contract, sometimes even your first, you can have a friend or family come and cruise with you for pretty much free. They pay $10 a day and they get a free cruise. Okay, so, you know, the more people you know out there, that helps. Every cruise line has their own rules around that. But you're, you know, actually you, you get better deals than we do in terms of bringing a friend or family member on board if you stick with a cruise line. Any other questions before I... Okay, your office space, okay, obviously ideally you want a window, you know, but, but you might not have one, uh, that's an inside cabin, inside cabin, treatment room, outside, and you know, it's, it's really nice when you have, here, let me go back to this, when you have a window, because you, you pretty much will have an ocean view to your office, I mean, if you think about how much it would cost you on land to have an ocean view, office, but even if you have an inside room, I mean, there, there, it's, a, it's, an, it's a beautiful five-star treatment room um, that you have that you're able to use. I've seen all kinds of different treatment rooms. They're all, you know, I think they're all really nice, but in general, I just wanted to give you an idea of, of, of what they might look like. We talked a little bit about the products that you have to sell. You do get a percentage, yes. Just going back to the treatment rooms, what equipment do we get? You have, we provide you with an e-stem, with alcohol swabs, with sharps containers, biohazard containers, um, the herbs, the products. Moxa? No moxa, no cupping. Okay, moxa, there's no ventilation for it. Not to mention, we don't even want to deal with the burns that come with moxa. 
Number two, cupping. It's just not a great advertisement for what we do. Think about the pool. Think about formal night. Even if someone wore a sign that says, this didn't hurt, everywhere that person goes, everyone's looking at them like, what did you do? So that's not exactly the, 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 um, the press that we want for acupuncture. It's not the advertisement that we find is effective. So, so those that you go back to basics. I mean, I have to tell you, when I was on board, I only had acupuncture. No e-stem, no heat lamp, no herbs, no nothing, just needles. And I came from a school where herbs were everything. And I cupped every patient, practically, because I was such a big, and I, and I did you know, bleeding and mocks up. So when I went on board and found out that the only thing I had were needles, I was thinking, oh my gosh, and now I'm charging three times what I was charging in the clinic. How is this going to work? Well, the, the nice thing is, is you really get to see the power of acupuncture you know, out there. You get to see how powerful just acupuncture is. So the good news is, is you do have a lot more than what we started with. You do have e-stem, you do have herbs, you have massage oil, you have a lot of products to use. You also have amazing facial products. Okay, for those of you who do want to do facial rejuvenation out there, not only is there a business that you can promote, but there's products, and they're really good products. They're based on essential oils. Most of them are organic uh, ingredients, and um, the essential oils are cold pressed. They're really, really awesome. And so the nice thing about it is not only do you have to invest in product, you don't have to do that. You have excellent products that you can recommend to your guests that they will get good results with. I think a lot of times what happens with acupuncturists, and I've seen this with just even my own friends who are acupuncturists, when they get out of school, what ends up happening is they invest all this money into an herbal pharmacy, okay? $3,000 or whatever else, and they're really excited and they put their herbal pharmacy up and they're really, you know, they can't wait for the first patient to come through the door. The patient comes in and they recommend, you know, Jawe Shaoya San, and then the patient says something like, well, let me check with my doctor first. Oh, I'm on medication, I don't really want to take those herbs, sorry. Then the acupuncturist says, okay, all right, you know, get to the next person. Well, eventually, you know, a year or two later, a lot of these herbs start expiring, okay? And then you end up throwing them out. Not only did you not make any money, but you actually lost money. So then you say, okay, let me invest in another herbal pharmacy. So you invest more money. And if this happens a couple times, eventually you stop buying the herbs and the supplements because they expire and you lose money. And then you just practice acupuncture. And a lot of people, after 10 years, that's exactly what they're doing. They're just practicing acupuncture, and that's why. What's good about working for Steiner and what's good about working on board is that you get to work with our products that are excellent, and you get to learn how to address those questions comfortably. Okay, if someone says, hey, I don't want to take that because I'm on a medication, or let me talk to my doctor first, you learn how to address those concerns comfortably, and you can do that you know, while using our products. And so you learn how to bring in supplements, bring in herbs, bring in those kinds of things. So when you are ready to invest in a herbal pharmacy, you'll find that you'll be a lot more comfortable with that and you'll, you won't lose money like a lot of people are doing. Okay, so what is a typical day gonna be? Here, what, what I have here is basically a C day. So this is gonna be your busiest day. Okay, sometimes you have two C days a week. Sometimes, ideally, you'd have three. That would actually be the best schedule, believe it or not. Um, and then sometimes you only have one. C days are going to be the days where you see the most patients. They're also going to be your busiest days where you work the longest hours. And they are long days. Okay, you are going to start in the morning, 7.30 meeting. Okay, you'll get up. Now, keep in mind, 7.30 might sound early, but it's not like you have to get in the car. You're an elevator ride away from work. You get dressed, whatever you do, eat some breakfast, and take an elevator up to work. You have your meeting with your whole team, and then ideally you'd be treating patients until your seminar. You do your seminar. After your seminar, that's ideally when you're booked up, and you're treating patients, you have your lunch break, you have dinner. That's a C day. Um, yes? The initial two hours, eight to 10 for acupuncture? If that's before our seminar, who's coming to that? Well, that's a good question. In the beginning of the at the beginning of every itinerary, you have what's called embarkation day, where you have everybody coming on board and they're doing spa tours. We train you how to take that take the, the, that opportunity where you have all those people coming to you, 
and then book patients from that. So you're gonna be booking your morning up from embarkation day. You should book the rest of your day up from your seminar, and then you put everyone on a treatment plan, right? So let's say you book 10 people, and all those people are on a treatment plan of three, five, and seven. That pretty much fills your whole schedule every week. Now, you know, every additional seminar just fills in the gaps. You have referrals from your patients, from within the team. That's how you're gonna fill your schedule week after week, okay? It, it can be really consistent. Once you learn what you're doing and how to do it, it's very repeatable. Hey, and that is one of the benefits, I think, of working at State, is there's a very clear objective. This is what I need to do right now. This is what I need to do next. And now, this is what I need to do. And if I do these things, I will be busy every cruise. And again, the good news is, is we don't expect you to know how to do that. We do provide training to teach you how to do one step, then the next, then the next. Okay, I know I didn't learn that in school. I would go to uh, treat a patient, and then they would just magically reappear the following week. Okay, never once did I book them, never once did I decide when they should come back, they just came back. Um, that's not what happens in real life, right? You treat somebody, and if you don't have, if you don't set up a treatment plan with them, you'll never see them again. For all they know, you are supposed to cure their 25-year back pain with one treatment. And so we do teach you in training how to set up a treatment plan, and that is going to be really important in terms of filling your schedule. Um, I have a few questions regarding that. So when, once they come back to you, because uh, cruises, I'm assuming, are what, one, maybe two weeks at a time? Roughly? Average, so, yeah. So I mean, what happens you know, in terms of patient continuity? Like, I mean, obviously, you're not going to be the one treating them anymore, but is there a referral network of any We refer them to AccuFinder. I mean, we have no ties to AccuFinder. You can refer them to whatever site that's comfortable for you. I have a lot of acupuncturists that practice, you know, in nearby port towns, and they'll say, we get a lot of people from the cruise ships. So, you know, a, a lot of what you do, there will be some people who have, you know, acupuncture on board, and their pain might not come back. I mean, that might be good for them for a while. Um, and then there'll be people who get good results and want to continue treatment. And then you say, listen, you can put in your you know, zip code and a list of qualified practitioners in your area will come up. So however you want to handle that is up to you. We, you know, we're not allowed to give out specific recommendations. We don't want to be tied to any specific agency or specific acupuncturist. But of course we want to have people continue their treatment. And you may be getting to this, but that end of day paperwork, do you usually fill out paperwork throughout the day? Or Both. do you find that it kind of piles up? And Both. And it depends how busy you are, and it depends on, you know, how busy you are, really. You're going to be doing your paperwork throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, you have to enter in everything in through like what's called a smart machine. So there's no cash that takes place on board. Everything is electronic. And so at the end of the day, you have, you've been working from one data machine all day long, then you just have to match against the other data machine. It'll take you 10, 20 minutes when you first get on board. It'll take you a couple minutes after you've been on board for a while. It'll be real fast once you get used to it. Uh, do we maintain like self-known type of thing? You have, well, probably not as thorough as what you're used to. I mean, it's a good practice and you certainly can, and that's great. It just depends how busy you are. Um, you, you, there will be an intake form. <clears throat> what's most important that we absolutely need from you and that we will audit from time to time is that did the patient sign the liability waiver, number one. Number two, did you point your put, write down your point prescriptions? Very important for obvious reasons, right? If there's ever a question about your treatment, we need to know where those needles went. Number three, needle counts. So you want to see needle 10, 10 needles went in, 10 needles came out. Those are the three things we need from you in terms of your intake. Everything else is up to you as a clinician. Uh, I have to go pretty soon, so can you talk about one contracts, and then I have another question for So seven month contracts, is there any, is that the only deal? Yeah, I mean right now we have flexible contracts, but there's gonna be some changes that, that take place in August. Um, there's something called the MLC, Maritime Labor Laws, 
and um, <clears throat> they're just regulating basically a lot of the, the labor that, that's not just on cruise ships. It's not even really about cruise ships, but we got lumped into it. It's more about people who travel on ferries and things like that. And so because of some of the laws that are coming down, we're going to have to start being more rigid with our contracts. You're in, in, unless you're graduating right now, yeah, so you, realistic, we're looking at seven months. That's it. That's it. And then you fly, you pay for the ticket to and from port, is that correct? Right now we are. We might at some point change it so that you fly yourself there, we fly you home. Okay. And then through the license, you need either a, a national license is okay? Or do you need either one. Either one? It's fine. Yeah, we just, we need a diploma, um, and we need either NCCOM or state license. Either one is fine. Any other questions? You said it was seven months. I thought our contracts on board was six. Seven. It'll change. It, for seven months, or that's like one month of training plus six months on board? Seven months on board. It's, this will all be coming August, and because you guys aren't, if you were, let's say you're applying for the job now, there, there's some flexibility. We've, been, we've, we've had flexibility for years, but come August, with some of these news laws that are coming down that really, they have nothing to do with us, but we have to abide by them, um, we have to be rigid with the seven-month contracts. And, you know, honestly, you kind of, it takes about four months, your first contract, to really know what you're doing anyway. In those last three months, it's like, okay, now I know what I'm doing. Now I can really, you know, make, the, make, make, make some good money, have, get some good experience. And you said, and we pay for, well, how, how long is the application process in terms of when you apply and when you get placed? I'll go over that. Any other questions? Um, do you accept, um, do you start people on the contract, like, is it ongoing, or is there a certain Ongoing. Okay. Every month I do training, and every month I hire. Okay. And then one quick question about your typical day. Say you have this typical day. Is there, like, a gym where employees can go and, like, do some yoga or just to... Absolutely. You will, what this doesn't show is your time off, okay? You will have time off. You have a day and a half off every week, and then you have the hours outside of the 52 hours, okay? 52 hours will take up a lot of your week in terms of the daytime. There's gonna be a lot of time where you're gonna have off. Most of the cruise lines allow you to use the guest gym in non-peak hours, which is fine. You wouldn't go during peak hours anyway, so that's the morning and the night. They'll all have, if, if they all have a crew gym, so if you're not allowed for some reason to use the guest, the guest gym, you can use the crew gym. There are ways to exercise. Also, your day off. I mean, I have an acupuncturist who um, loves to bike ride, okay? So every time she's in a port, the way she sees the port is by, you know, renting a bicycle and traveling around. And she's been working with us for so many years that actually the ship that she stays on, she, she stays on this one ship for three, she's been on it for three years on and off. They actually let her keep a bicycle on there. Not, I mean, don't expect that, okay, that, that's weird. I've never heard that before. But, you know, you will find your way within this. I know for me, before I wor worked on a cruise ship, I did a lot of Tai Chi, I did a lot of Qigong, I did a lot of yoga. Those were all things that were part of my daily practice. When I worked on a cruise ship, it became very obvious that I was not gonna be able to maintain those routines. So I found new things, right? I, for me, I like to walk on the top, uh, the top, the track, just to get the fresh air, or the walking deck, I did that. I went to the gym. When I was in port, I would go bike riding, or I would go jogging on the beach. There was always something that I could do to get my energy moving. And it was different, but I still kind of end, ended up at the same place. Okay, so you will find your routine, you have to. You have to, so you'll kind of figure out, these are my options, and out of these options, these are gonna be the best fit for me. There's going to be a lot of rules around guests, okay? You have to realize that we're the ones working on board. We're not on, we're not on vacation. And these people, they've worked all year round to go on this vacation. They're very excited, and the experience is about them. It's not about us. You know, I have a lot of acupuncturists who do yoga. You know, they do this some in their room. They do it a lot of times in port. There is a yoga class that you could take on your day off. Um, it'll be your friend who's teaching it. Some of you probably even know more about yoga than they will. But, you know, at least it'll kind of maintain your flexibility and things. We're allowed to go with the guests to a class? On your day off, you, you have to clear it from your spa manager. But, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. It's not going to be, it's going to be different than what you're used to, though, now.
Well, so that, that leads me to a, an important question of where are we allowed to go on the ship? Because I, I understand that we're not on vacation, so I, mean, I could appreciate that they want to keep some separation. Yeah. Um, but where are we allowed to go? Like, can we use any of the jacuzzis, pools, things like that, anything else that's on deck? Here's what's on limits and here's what's off limits, okay? So you will have a lot of areas that are your own, okay? So there'll be crew areas where guests are not allowed, okay? Has, has everyone here seen The Matrix? <laughs> it's a lot like that movie where you have this kind of industrial area and that's kind of like real life because people are living in these areas and you know you can wear whatever you want in that area and then you go into the guest areas and these are areas that you know there's artwork and music and, and there you know everything's really done to the nines and um, that's where the guests are okay they don't even know that these other areas exist and you're going to be going in and out of these areas. So in the crew areas, you know, that's your time where you're comfortable, you can wear what you want, you know, there's, there's, you know, you can just relax. In the guest areas, when you're in a guest area, you're on. So even if it's your time off, there will be nights, like formal night, for example. Formal night is when you get dressed up, everybody does. Men wear tuxedos and ties, women wear gowns, and you'll be one of them, okay? You'll go out on formal night, you know, there'll be music, there'll be a show. If you have a ship that has a restaurant, you know, maybe you can go to a restaurant that night. The difference between you and the guest is that you have a name tag. So that means that there is accountability to your actions. So let's say you go to the bar and you're rowdy and you're crazy. Well, if you're a guest, no one's going to say anything to you. But because you're crew and you have your name tag, if you're making noise, if you're, being, if you're creating issues, if you're being rude to the waitress, then your actions will be held accountable. But do we have the choice to make that? I mean, I'm assuming part of that will be a marketing venture to promote ourselves. Yes. Also, are we allowed to just enjoy our time off? You are allowed to join, you will, but when you're in a guest area, you, you still need to always know that your actions will be held accountable. Okay, so there is, there is a big difference between relaxing in a crew area and relaxing in a guest area. Just like, let's say you go see the show, there are shows, and you know, the shows are wonderful a lot of times. You can go to the show, no, you can go to the show, but you're not going to get the best seats in the house. Those all go to the guests. You'll probably be sitting in the back watching the show from, you know, a little bit further of a vantage point. And every ship is different. Okay, and the rules are going to really differ based upon the hotel director on board, based upon the cruise line. You know, all of these things are going to be very different. Pool jacuzzi is usually on or off limits? Pretty much usually off. Um, I just wanted to Which ship? Um, I, I b briefly mentioned that you do have options. You know, we, it is in my best interest to match you with what I think is going to be a good fit for you. Okay, I, I only have three days with you in training. People kind of tell me, okay, I really need to save money on this trip. Oh, I really want to see the world. I will try to match you the best I can with what you're looking for. I don't always have that flexibility or that availability. Your placement will be based upon your performance at training, your availability, and what I have available. Requirements, we already, we already kind of went over this um, really quickly. Seven month contract, acupuncture license, also a physical. You do need to be physically fit to work on board. What does that mean? Is that everyone will have to go through a physical before they're cleared to work on board. And um, that, will, that physical is outlined by the cruise line. So Royal Caribbean has their own physical. Norwegian has their own physical. There is a port doctor that you can go see in San Diego in LA. You will have to pay for the physical. It can range anywhere between $150 to $450, or even sometimes more, depending on which cruise line. If money is, an, is a real issue for you, then we can try to fit you on a cruise ship where the medical is not going to be that expensive. We don't pay for that. That is going to be a cost for you, because if you don't pass the physical, we can't put you on board. Um, also, we expect for you to be able to run at least two rooms. I don't know if you're able to do that in the school right now. Can you guys run multiple rooms? No? So, so starting, at, starting out, I guess at this point, we would just need you to be open-minded to the fact that we do have that expectation. So if you're not used to doing it, at this point, you just would be have, have to be comfortable with stepping into a situation where that might be the reality. I wasn't used to doing it, and I stepped into two and then three. If I could do it, you could do it, which is time management. Oh wait, I'll get to your questions. Ability to publicly speak on TCM to topics. There is a lot of public speaking when it comes to this job. 
That's just the reality. If that terrifies you, welcome to the club. Everybody is terrified of public speaking. I, they did a survey and a, apparently public speaking is scarier than death. Okay, so if you find yourself intimidated by public speaking, you're not alone. All I can tell you is you'll get over it. You do it so much in this job and the wonderful thing is you have a revolving audience. So if you do a seminar and it doesn't go well, you get a new audience in seven days. It's not a big deal. And then obviously completing our training course. The training course is in Los Angeles. It's three days. It's free. Um, you can attend the training course without even committing to the position. It's a chance for you to really get more information about this job and, and make sure that it's for you. I mean, this is such a quick orientation. It's a seven month commitment. We want to make sure that you feel really good about making that commitment before you do. And the course would be the next step. They train us in facial rejuvenation? No, it's just a really quick one. It's not, it's not like what they're training out there. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an abbreviated facial rejuvenation. Okay, so I've gone over really a lot of the benefits of this, uh, of this position. I, I, I also want to go over the challenges because I think that you should know both. It's important to note it is a 52-hour work week. It is going to be hard work. Um, you are living with a lot of people. You may or may not get along with all of those people. You may or may not like your spa manager. If I, you know, I always get the question, what are reasons why people break contract or that they don't like this job? I would say number one reason they don't like their manager. Okay, whether or not you get along with that person, I don't know. That's a variable I have no control over. Okay, if you find yourself in confrontation with a lot of people, this person tends to be very, you know, type A, you know, they're in charge of 20 people. Okay, so, so getting along with people is really important. You're going to be living and working with a lot of people very far out of your comfort zone, okay? You will be away from friends and family. You're gonna be eating different food. You're going to be treating a lot of patients, a lot more than what you're doing now, okay? You're gonna be doing a lot of public speaking, which is uncomfortable for most people. You will be meeting people from all over the world. You'll be in a new country every, almost every day. This is very far out of your comfort zone. And you know the challenge to that is that you're going to feel really uncomfortable when you first get there for a period of time. But the reward and the benefit of that is immense. Okay, I, I can't tell you how many acupuncturists I've seen come into our program and you know not sure of their next step, not sure of themselves as an acupuncturist, okay? Not confident in their skills. And even after one contract, they leave with confidence Okay, they learn how to, to build and book people in for treatments. They learn how to not just talk about Chinese medicine, but to motivate people. Okay, to get people out of their chairs and want to make a difference in their health. Okay, they learn these very valuable skills and a lot of confidence, not just as themselves as a practitioner, but as a person. Okay, something beautiful happens when we step outside of our comfort zone. Okay, we learn that we can do anything we set our minds to and that we don't need anyone in order to achieve our dreams and you really get to see that on board. Okay, I know for me, I wasn't confident when I graduated acupuncture school and I, I, was a, I was an honor roll, I was a great student. But I had only seen five cases of everything, five cases of back pain, a couple cases of knee pain, a couple cases of sciatica. How can you be confident if all you've seen is a couple cases of everything? And until you can look at someone in their eye and say, you know what, I can help you, you will not be successful as an acupuncturist. How do you get that confidence? Only one way, experience. We're happy to give you that experience. So I'm happy to be here today to provide you with that job opportunity so that you don't have to graduate looking on the internet thinking, oh my God, my only option is private practice and I know nothing about business. You have another option. And when it comes to jobs, Options are a good thing, especially in this day and age. I did Europe for my first contract, and there was a portion of people who spoke French and Spanish, um, and some of them came in for treatment. And I would pull on the international hostess, and I would have her translate. You know, I learned things like duelo or se va, you know, like, ça feel okay? There is a translator. You can pull in a translator for that. Um, to do your seminars, though, you, you know, you're not going to be able to do a full seminar in a different language. 
you you get a lot of you know there's a lot of also Americans that are on their ships. The ships that are dominantly like French, we wouldn't put you on or Spanish. We just wouldn't even put you on unless you spoke the language. 